Why GFK's casket was buried at sea. John F. Kennedy lay in two coffins, but only one was presented for public viewing. The other one had its own curious fate. It involved a secret Air Force mission. Where did this unusual arrangement come from? Let's get to the bottom of it, no pun intended. The details of Kennedy's assassination are well known. The president was shot in Denver's Dealey Plaza on November 22, 1963. Kennedy was hit in the head and neck. He was rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital. JFK was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was sworn in less than two hours later. Meanwhile, a member of GFK's team called O'Neill's funeral home. They requested the best coffin available. The funeral home's owner, Vernon O'Neill, acted quickly. He chose a bronze coffin with a white satin inlay by the Elgin Casket Company. The casket cost $3,995, around $38,000, $500 today. O'Neill drove to the hospital with the casket. He was shocked by the condition of Kennedy's body. Blood was still oozing from his bullet wounds. To preserve the coffin's interior, he wrapped the body in linen sheets. He also lined the casket with plastic. Kennedy's body was loaded into the coffin and flown to Bethesda Naval Hospital. This was where Jacqueline Kennedy had requested the autopsy. When the doctors opened the casket, they saw it had become stained. O'Neill's efforts had been in vain, so it was replaced with another one. GFK's embalmed body was displayed at the Capitol Rotunda. O'Neill didn't know what to do with the original coffin. He kept it back at his funeral home for more than a year. Obviously, he expected to be paid but the government said the price was excessive. After all, they hadn't really used the coffin. All right, said O'Neill, I'll find other buyers then. Some morbid collectors had already offered him $100,000 for the blood-stained casket. Jacqueline was shocked. The government immediately paid up. The coffin was taken to the National Archives and seemingly forgotten. Two more years passed. Then someone apparently said, what are we keeping this thing for? Burying the coffin would have been easy, but what if someone found out and dug it up? Thus began a costly military operation that was only declassified in 1999. Attorney General Robert Kennedy said it had to be buried at sea. The casket was turned over to the US Air Force. They drilled 42 holes in it and put three 80-pound send bags inside. The coffin was also fitted with two parachutes. This ensured it wouldn't break apart upon impact with the water. In February 1966, the casket was loaded on a C-130 Hercules transport plane. It flew out into the Atlantic, about 100 miles east of Washington, D.C. The area was used as the military's dumping ground for unused ammo. It was out of the way of regular shipping and air travel. It would also be safe from trawling and other seafloor activities. The C-130 descended to 500 feet. The tail hatch plane was open and the casket was dropped into the water. It sank immediately after impact. After circling the area for 10 minutes, the C-130 flew back to base. JFK was a Navy veteran, so it was ultimately rather fitting 